just to pick up where we left off, right? You've got L1 here and L2 over here. And what we're after are the pair of lines, and there are two, that will bisect the angles at A, right? They have to bisect the angles at A. You're going to get two because whatever line bisects this angle over here will bisect that one, and vice versa. So two lines are what we're looking for, okay? Now, we also had done part A, which said based on the perpendicular distance formula, which said for some point P, and that's where we had drawn one, okay? Um, if its coordinates are variable, so we'll just call them X, comma Y, right? Whatever those values may be. Then what we determined was this. We used the perpendicular distance formula on both of these guys, and by part A, we had established this. Do you remember this? Yeah. So you remember we weirded out a little bit because we thought, hold on, but these are not, these are not equal to each other. In what, in what world are they equal to each other? And the answer is in the world where they follow the rules of this particular point. Because this point doesn't just go anywhere randomly. It follows very specific geometric rules. It can only be in certain places. X and Y can only be related in certain ways. Okay. And then part B said, hence, hence, use this thing to work out these equations, right? No tan theta equals m1 minus m2 on one plus, you know, none of that business. Um, no simultaneous, well, yeah, no, no just going from scratch, finding where a is, and then just trying to do some point gradient business in there. We just had to go from a. We just had to go from a. So here's my suggestion for our step forward, okay? What point, uh, what this, this line represents, right, is the relationships between x and y such that I'll be somewhere on these angle bisector lines, okay? But there's too much that's unknown here. There's too much. Um, there are four unknowns, four unknowns, and I've only got one equation, okay? So I've got to, sorry, I should say I've got two unknowns. I've got an X and a Y, but I've got them on both sides, okay? I need to narrow it down a little bit, right? So therefore, I'm gonna start by saying this. When X equals zero. Now. This is a big deal, right? This is one of those crucial steps where before this, you're like, what direction do I go in? And then once you start this ball rolling, you're like, oh, okay, now I know what to do. But here is why this makes sense. I'm gonna say when x equals zero, because on this diagram, right, I can actually, and this is why it's so important you have a diagram, I can draw what these angle bisectors are doing. Even if it's not perfect, I can do it pretty close, right? So for example, where I've drawn P at the moment, <coughs> The whole series of um, points that would form that line look kind of like this. Do you agree with that? Do you see that anywhere along that black line, I'm going to be bisecting this angle here. It's going to be 45, 45, because these two lines are at right angles to each other. Okay? So there's a whole bunch. Now, I'm going to keep going, right? It goes down here. <coughs> In the same way, right, there's that other angle bisector. And it's going to do something like this. <clears throat> okay? Now, there's my pair of angle bisectors, and I'm, I'm after these two equations, okay? What you notice about these two is that just like every other straight line out there that isn't just horizontal or vertical, I can do this, and what will I get when I solve this? Intercepts. I'll get intercepts, won't I? I'll get y intercepts, y. right? Y intercepts. What values am I expecting? Something like that, which is between a half and three, right? And something like this, who knows where that is, okay? But that's what I should find when I go ahead and solve this, right? So when x equals zero, I'm just pop that in here, I'm gonna get this. You happy with that? Just all the x terms have disappeared. Now this, you're like, hold on a second, okay, this is an absolute value equal to an absolute value. We've seen these before. There are gonna be two solutions to this, which is exactly what we're anticipating, right? So let's have a look at this. How would you, how would you work out? Like you could do this by cases. What would be the quickest way? Yeah. So like, just um, make the, like remove the absolute values and take the positive side and then take the negative side of it. Yes, that's exactly right. Like this really means plus or minus this. And this really means plus or minus this as well, okay? Minsu, did you want to suggest something? The inequalities that you would safely put minus and then you would put it. That's exactly right. I could do that. Um, since it's equals, here's kind of the approach I'm going to take. Um, just imagine for a second, this is y minus 3 and two, minus 2y two plus 1, right? 
When we usually see one variable, we're used to solving in terms of x. Okay, so if I just put over on the side here, right, if what I asked you to solve was this, <coughs> okay, I can visualize this. This is not hard to visualize. x minus 3, what does x minus 3 as a line usually look like? It's the normal line that goes through the origin, but it's been shifted down 3 units or to the right 3 units. In a linear function, those are the same thing. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Because look. There you go. I can either think about it moving down or moving to the right. They're both the same. Okay. Now I've got an absolute value on it, so that means it looks like this. You happy with that? Okay, so there's the left hand side. What does the right hand side look like, roughly speaking? Uh, I'm gonna have my intercept at one, right? Which is which is lower down here because that's three, isn't it? And because of that minus two, it's going to be steep and going down. Right? So it's gonna do this. And then it's going to bounce back upward. You happy with that? Okay, now, this is super, super rough. But it's, it's clear enough to see. Like, I don't need to worry about this branch over here, do I? Completely irrelevant. I'm never going to intersect with that branch. I'm just going to forget about it. Okay? What's the equation of this branch here, the very first one that I drew? Think about it. Minus yeah. x plus 3. Okay, it's going to be minus x because it's decreasing. And plus 3. Or 3 minus x, if you like. Putting a minus sign on this just turns it around, right? Just think back to your absolute value. So therefore, the equation of that is 3 minus x. Okay. And then, of course, to get these two, I'm just going to solve it for both cases, right? Minus 2x plus 1 and 2x minus 1. Okay. Does that make sense of what we're doing? Now, that's all in terms of x's. What we actually have is y's. It's all exactly the same. It's just a different label. Okay. So now, here are the two cases I'm going to solve. I can ignore y minus 3 as a case because I just showed I'm never going to actually intersect with that. Right? So here's case 1, 3 minus y equals this. And here's case 2, 3 minus y equals that. Okay? This is not too hard. We could do this together. What's this one going to be equal to? You could do it in one line, right? You add 2y both sides, so you're going to get y. And you subtract 3 from both sides, and you get minus 2. Minus 2. Where's that? That's clearly this guy, isn't it? Right? Now, obviously, my scale's not great, but it's obvious to know, like, one's positive, one's negative. Right? So clearly, that's the one I'm talking about. You have a go at this. What am I going to do? 3y equals 4. You agree with that? Yeah. Um, if you want to think about it the other way around, I'll add y to both sides, which makes this 3y. And then I add 1 to both sides, which makes this 4. And then I just flip it around the way that makes y the subject. So y is 4 thirds. What value is that? That one. Bam. There you go. Okay. So now I've got two y values, y intercepts I should say. To get the equation of the line, I can take a whole variety of different parts here. If I knew what a was, right, I could do two point formula. That would work. Okay. But surely I can do this in a faster way, right? Especially taking advantage of what I've just done. Yeah, Vincent. Vincent. Yeah, right. If I can find out these two, one, two, then I can put this into two intercept form, which we saw was a really, really simple way to get the equation of a line, right? So I'm going to go when y equals zero. When y equals zero, my y terms are going to disappear up here. So I'm going to go 2x minus 3 absolute value, x plus 1 absolute value. Again, for some rough working, to save myself time in terms of working out the cases, I'm just going to do a super rough squish, sketch of this guy, right? Let's have a look. X plus 1, how would you describe it? It's shifted to the left or it's shifted upward, which are both the same thing. Right? So there it goes. Okay. It's gone that way. Now, 2x minus 3 would normally be down <coughs> here, wouldn't it? Okay. So it's actually going to be here. Right, we kind of have a mirror image of what we have up the top, uh, which is partly a coincidence based on these coefficients that we have here. Okay, all of that just to say, which which case, which part of this can I ignore safely? This part over here, irrelevant, right? So therefore, what's the equation of this part? It's it's this part here. The first one I drew is x plus one, and then the other two is just well, I'm going to take both cases, right? So that's not hard. So uh, I am running out of space. I can just fit it in x plus 1 equals one case, and x plus 1 equals the other case. Okay. 
Yeah, it is. Two and three, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay, now, you go ahead, you check your values out, you look, does it kind of make sense? Does that look like two thirds and does that look like four? Yep. Yep. Sure enough. Okay, great. I'm almost there. What do I want? I want the equations of these two things, okay? So one of the reasons why the diagram is so powerful is unlike this, which is like, which X and which Y match up? Answer? Dunno, okay? Uh, it's not obvious at all. Here though, right? Two thirds and minus two, like, you know, the line is going right through there. Okay, so let's do the first equation. Uh, and I'm gonna call it angle bisector one because that's what it's doing. Angle bisector one. Obviously, you can call whichever one you want, okay? <coughs> What's two intercept form? Two intercept form is x on the x-intercept, which I'm going to pick that two-thirds one. Yep. Uh, plus y on the y-intercept, which its corresponding one is? Minus two. And that's equal to one. So, I want this in general form. So, what shall I do to this to make it general form? What should I multiply through by? Now I want you to remember, right, this is one of the, I admit, this is one of the, no, point, no form is perfect, right? So the problem here is you've got fractions on fractions. This is not really a, a three on the bottom though, is it? It's actually a three on the top because you're dividing by two thirds. So really I've got a denominator of two here and a denominator of two here. Does that make sense? So I'm just going to multiply by two. That'll do it. Uh, I'm going to put in the next pair of intercepts, so that's x on 4 plus y on 4 thirds, and that's equal to 1. So what shall I multiply through by? 4. x plus 3y minus 4. <coughs> Two angle bisectors. 